What is one lie you have stuck with that you probably will never confess? When I was young, my parents left me home alone for an evening. I decided to take a fan outside, take off the front protective cage, and throw fruit at the blades. It was awesome. But then I threw a banana and I broke the fan. I put it back in the closet in such a way that if somebody were to even open the door, the fan would fall and break. Next day, I hear my mom from the other room, oh shoot I broke the fan, never gonna tell her. And then she put the fan back in the closet the same way for your dad, so she wouldn't get in trouble with him. Some say the fan is still falling out of closets to this day. Been waiting for a while to get this off my chest. In 4th grade I had an elementary school teacher, I'll call him Mr. Lant, who was cool as could be. He had the rare skill in that he was able to teach you, and make you care about what you were learning. We would play kickball and dodgeball at the end of the day. He was the only teacher who did that with his students. It also helped that Mr. Land took a very personal interest in me. I remember I got a 4.0 GPA, not a big deal in 4th grade, which was the best I'd ever done in school. We had a breakfast for all the kids on honor roll, and he told my mom what a great kid I was. Well it all turned downhill when we did our yearly scholastic books order. For those of you who are too young, scholastic books was a way for companies to make money off of you, because you felt cool ordering books out of a magazine catalog. But you could also order science kits and other experiments. I ordered a geology kit that had all different kinds of rocks and probably some R. L. Stein books I would never read. Well the months went by and we got our order in, and my package of rocks sucked. There were these crystal clear rocks, maybe they were quartz, and I didn't have a single one. But for some reason Mr. Land ordered the same geology kit, and his contained a multitude of crystal clear rocks. I don't know what possessed me, but I had to have them. I waited until after school when we were all hanging around the classroom showing off what books and kits we'd gotten, and I stole all of Mr. Land's crystal clear rocks. I remember getting home and going to my bedroom to stroke the smooth surface of them like Gollum in Lord of the Rings. Mr. Lant was always my favorite teacher, and I felt terrible for doing this. He sat us all down and tried to get the crook to admit to stealing them. I looked around the class with a face that said, who did this, even thought I felt like a piece of shit inside. I felt so guilty I came home that day, flushed the rocks down the toilet, and never told anyone. Last year I did a South African literature course, and the teacher asked, Hey has anybody been to South Africa? I wasn't listening and for some stupid ducking reason I was like, Oh yeah I totally have. Everyone then exploded and was like, OMG, so cool. Tell us all about it, then they all kept asking me so much shit about South Africa, and what I did there, that I went home and googled the shit out of South Africa, I mean I street viewed everything so I could believably make up stuff because there was no way I could deny it now. Man, the most elaborate thing I have ever done. It would have been less effort to literally go to South Africa itself. I didn't slip and fall in the creek on the hike at our 5th grade camping trip. I tried to squat against a tree, slipped on dry leaves, and peed all over myself. Then I sat in the creek and caught up to everyone else so my story seemed more legit. You can't be the kid who peed on themselves on a class trip, no one will ever forget. I hid my landlord's car. But granted she parked in a no parking zone in front of our building, and she parked one foot away from my running car, winter time had to go to work, so I just backed the duck up and drove off. My mom called me in my way to work to tell me she saw what I did, and that she deserved it. She and I are the only ones who know. I had a child when I was young and put him up for adoption. The courts require you to post an ad in the paper to give the biological father a chance at claiming his parental rights. Well, I was heavily into drinking, drugging and general irresponsible debt wish style living, when I got pregnant, and his father along with his father's entire family were, and still are, abusive addicts. When I found out I was pregnant, I was told to have an abortion, because he didn't want me having his child. When the time came to write the affidavit of paternity for the adoption, I claimed I'm a giant whore and slept with a whole bunch of guys, and didn't know who the father was. I was told I needed to place an ad in the paper listing potential guys, and I just said I didn't even ask names, 
I was a drunk party favor. Long story short, I know who the father is, I keep tabs on him. But he contacted me 6 months after our child was born to make sure I'd had the abortion. I told him I had miscarried, my son is better off without this guy. I'm sure I'll get lots of down votes for this too, but whatever. In second grade, I got attacked by a golden labrador tied in a parking lot, after I dropped my super bowl and went to get it back. The dog was usually friendly, and I had petted it a few times when the owner was out. But when I reached to take the ball, the dog grabbed my wrist and bit me pretty hard. I was able to get away, but I had some bleeding and two puncture wounds to my wrist. I didn't want the dog to get in trouble, so I threw myself to the ground, scraped my knees, my other wrist and shin. Threw sand and gravel in. It looked like I did trip and had a bad fall and the bite was looking as if I had hit sharp rocks. The dog lived a nice long life, but I got in so much trouble for being clumsy and ripping my clothes. My family was pretty abusive, and I knew very well what was going to happen to me. Still didn't want the dog to be punished. I've convinced all of my friends, all of them, that I have no sense of smell. The only people who know that I can, are my immediate family. I don't make a big deal about it, but I think it's too late to go back on it now. Why? I had a cold once, and my friend asked me to smell something and I said, I can't smell, because I couldn't write then. He said, whoa, that's crazy. So I went with it. The piece of writing I've gotten the most praise for, have won contests with, got published, is plagiarized. I found it online, printed it out, and someone found it and insisted that it was the best thing I'd ever written, without bothering to ask me if I'd actually written it, and I was too shy and nervous to speak up and correct them, until it was far, far too late. Nobody will ever find out, because the real author is dead, and his site doesn't even exist on the Wayback Machine. Jesus, man. You didn't have to murder the guy to protect your secret. When I was 8, my aunt Millie who was 99 was sitting on the edge of a bed. I enthusiastically tried to show her how to jump on beds because it was so much fun. I jumped next to her, she flew off onto the floor, and I thought I killed her, so I ran away into my bed and pretended to be asleep. My mom accuses me of trying to carve my name into her kitchen table when I was about 14. The marks are still there. I confess to this, because she would lose her shit if she discovered I in fact was carving R2D2, even 15 years later. To be fair, my name shares similar characteristics with R2D2, so it's not totally out of left field. About 7 years ago my friend somehow convinced me to attend an AA meeting, court mandated with him. I had never been before and didn't really know what to expect. My friend and I got there right as it was about to start, and sat down in the back. The guy in charge of the meeting did his intro, and then asked if anyone wanted to start us off. Silence. So he says, how about that girl that just walked in with the big sunglasses? I wore some big ass sunglasses to be incognito at the meeting, which in turn had backfired. I had no idea what to do, so I introduced myself and started telling the most elaborate emotional story I could come up with, about my life as an alcoholic and all the details leading me to rock bottom, to where I was at today. I talked for about 5 minutes, and had this older gentleman in tears next to me when I was done. My friend, new friend who didn't know me too well, just stared at me all confused as duck and whispered, holy shit were you serious? No, of course I wasn't, but what the hell was I supposed to do? I was young and obviously a dumbass. Then he asks for the next volunteer, and ends up calling on another woman in the row in front of me. Oh I'm just observing, was all she said and he moved on to someone else. What the duck? I didn't know you could say that. Shit. At the end of class this girl comes up to me and gives me a big hug. She tells me she recognized me from high school and invites me to other meetings which I turned down politely before running the hell out of there. I see that girl a few times a year, and she talks to me about my progress, and I ask her about hers. I remind her about how far she's come, and tell her to stay strong when she is going through a rough time. I think I inadvertently became a role model for her, and have been able to help her through some rough patches. I think it's much better that she doesn't know, 
since she can just tell herself, at least I'm not that girl, and instantly feel better. I'm 30 years old, work in advertising, pretty successful, senior manager level, make $80,000 plus annually, and I never graduated from college. I was a smart kid, but I was just not prepared for going to school away from home, and having to be responsible. I basically skipped class all the time, partied hard, and ended up dropping my classes, most of the 9 semesters I was in undergrad. I would forge my semester grade so my parents had no idea. Anyways, after 4 and a half years, my parents were obviously expecting me to graduate. So I told them that I did, but that I wasn't going to walk, I went to a huge state school, so it was believable that I didn't want to sit through a lengthy graduation ceremony. I was able to get an interview at a small advertising agency right after I graduated, and they didn't ask to see my transcript, so I was able to accept their job offer. Now, 8 years later, I've worked at two other companies, both of which are small companies that don't do background checks. When I apply for jobs now, I always do small, privately owned agencies, so that I don't run the risk of having to go through a background check. I had one scare years ago when I was offered a job. I put in my two weeks notice at my old job, and then the new company decided to do a background check, which I obviously failed, so then I had to go back to my old company and say, just kidding, I'm staying, awkward. Only two people know, a friend and an ex-boyfriend. I haven't even told my husband. I'm scared that I might get blackout drunk one night and tell him. He would definitely not be cool with it. In hindsight, I wish I would have been more serious about school, so I wouldn't have to live this lie, but I also think it's kind of awesome that I've been able to be so successful without a college degree. This is probably too late, but I'll give it a shot. About a month ago, I wore clip in bangs to work, as a joke. Everyone reacted so well, telling me they like my hair better this way, and I became self-conscious about taking them out. I work with mostly men. So while they can't see the difference, they would notice bangs disappearing. I don't want to wear them forever, so I've bought a second pair that's longer and blends in with my hair better. Soon I will buy a third that's even longer, and eventually just stop wearing them, pretending they've grown out. I'm a monster. I still feel bad about this. When I was 17 my dad let me borrow his awesome army green 99's wrangler to take my date to prom. I was driving a piece of shit Volvo at the time. After the dance was over and I had dropped my date off, we had a good time. I was on cloud 9 and jamming out to the doors, not focusing on the road at all. As I was going down a hill near my house, I dropped my back right tire off the road on a soft shoulder, and overcorrected trying to get back on the road. The jeep did a 180, skidded off the other side of the road, and smashed into a couple of trees. I was okay but the jeep was pretty much done for. I immediately called my dad and told him that a deer had run out in front of me, and that I swerved to miss it which caused the accident. He came to pick me up, and after he saw I was okay, he got very, very mad. He said he didn't believe my story, and that if he found out I was lying to him it wouldn't end well for me. For your information my dad is very large, has a huge beard, and is Vietnam vet. He's one scary mother ducker when he gets pissed. So I was out, and stuck with my bullshit story. Things were tense between the two of us for a bit, but I guess he kind of let it go after a couple of weeks. What makes my lie so bad is that about a month later, my mom was coming down the same hill when a huge buck ran out into the side of her car, at almost the exact same place where I had my accident. My dad took this as validation of my story, and apologized profusely to me saying that he wouldn't doubt my word again. Five years later and I still haven't told him the truth.